G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Again, continuing on with the draft season theme. Today we're going to talk about a few teams, specifically four, that uh, I think really, really need to nail the 2022 AFL draft, considering where they're at as both a club and a list. Now, it seems very obvious to maybe just pick out the worst teams in the competition, the teams that finish in the bottom four, but I think there's a little bit more nuance to it as well. So we're gonna go into some context as to why I think some of these struggling teams uh, really need to nail this draft. And it may be that they've got a particularly big draft hand. It might be retention issues, it might be the existing lack of youth on their list. And conversely, there's at least one bottom four team that I didn't nominate in this because I don't think someone like an Essendon, for instance, doesn't have the same real need to get this draft right than the teams I'm going to mention in this video. So we are intending to keep up the draft content as we get closer and closer to draft day. I'm intending to do a live stream for the actual event. Uh, we'll see. I'll certainly try and lock in the first day of the draft because that's uh, kind of exciting, especially when my club has two picks in that draft. But before I get into it, guys, a word from our sponsors, manscaped.com. If you want to level up your male grooming routine, they're the guys that you should go check out. You can get 20% off and free shipping on a variety of all their products. They've got the actual Lawn Mile 4.0, the shaver, but also, you know, shampoos, conditioners, deodorants, ball wipes, all that sort of jazz. Stuff you don't think you need, but you need. And the weather's getting warmer as well, so really consider those ball wipes. Summer is approaching, it's time to get in the gym get a bit of a tan, level up your manscaping routine, and uh, make sure you get 20% off and free shipping when you visit manscaped.com with the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, no spaces. All right, let's crack into it. I've got four teams who desperately need to nail this year's draft. I'm gonna start with the GWS Football Club. For context, they finished third last this year with just six wins and 16 losses. They have picks one, 15, 18, 19, and 31. So four picks in the top 20, one of those being pick one, and then another good second rounder in pick 31. And for further context, we know this club has been bleeding players almost since inception, actually, but I feel like it's starting to turn the tide where they can't really handle it anymore. So back in 2019, they lost Aiden Bonner to North Melbourne, a former first round pick. 2020 is where their retention issues really broke the back of them, I feel. Jeremy Cameron walked out. Zach Williams joined Carlton. Aiden Core was pretty high up in their best and fairest, and he left to North Melbourne. Jai Caldwell is a really talented former first rounder. They also lost Jackson Haitley, a former first rounder, and then, of course, the all important Zach Langdon. 2021 was a relatively good year for retention. They only lost Jeremy Finlayson, who at times has been an important player, and then they really got sucker punched this offseason, losing Tim Taranto, Jacob Hopper, two of their most important midfielders. They lost Bobby Hill, another important forward for them, and then Tanner Braun, who was drafted in the first round of 2020, the year that they had their massive retention issues, and then now he's out of the club as well. So we're painting the picture of a massive exodus. You know, I didn't even go back as far as 2018 when they lost Dylan Shield. So I think 2020 really marked the period where Previously, they might have been shedding players to deal with salary cap issues, and then I think 2020 onward, they just these are the players they didn't want to lose. So what that's led to is them, first of all, sliding down the ladder, and also the composition of their talent on their list uh, is nowhere near what it once was, and that's why it's really important with these picks, including having pick one in this year's draft, that they really get it right, not only from a talent perspective, picking the most talented kids, but also picking kids that are going to have a future at the Giants and won't just leave after two to four seasons. It's a sad state of a Affairs. I think, I can't remember who said it, but I heard someone talking about the Giants and they really do just have a different talent pool to pick from in this upcoming draft. I think there's been a number of players rumored to be saying that they don't want to leave Victoria. Those players are Wardlaw, Sheasel and Sardis, guys that were around their picks before they traded them anyway. It may lead them to, you know, favoring some Vic country kids because historically the country kids are less likely to want to go home to their home city than say the Vic Metro kids. As such, they're likely to pick Aaron Cadman with the first pick of the draft. Whether or not that's because he's from Vic Country or they just need a key forward, it may be a bit of both. They've also copped a huge blow to their midfield in particular this offseason with Taranto, Hopper and Bruin all walking out on the club. And I think they're going to need at least one pure midfielder from this upcoming draft. And for the last number of years, you know, the ruck situation hasn't been perfect either. So they kind of need to replenish just about any part of their list. I think they're likely to look at some tools, but as I said, at least one 
maybe two midfielders would be ideal as well. For them, some of the ideal prospects that they'd want to pick up, obviously Aaron Cadman uh, heads that list, but someone perhaps like a Lewis Hayes or a Jed Buzzlinger, a couple of key defensive prospects there just for balance. Harry Barnett's probably the best ruck in the draft, and they've got picks 15, 18, and 19, so that's probably around where he would likely be picked up. And then also just look at best available mids at their various picks, whether that be a Hotton, a Husswaite, or an Elijah Hewitt. As it's such a shame to say this, but they're going to have to consider kids who are less likely to be flight risks because the lack of retention is killing them. It's just a revolving door of talent, and this year they need to get it right. The next club that really needs to nail this upcoming draft is the West Coast Eagles, who are coming off their worst season statistically. Obviously, they finished second last. They have won a spoon before, but to win just two games and uh, whatever their percentage was, it was the worst season I've ever seen as a West Coast fan. They hold picks 8, 12, 20, and 26 in this year's draft. So obviously the context with that is the Tim Kelly deal a couple of years ago, three Three years ago now left them uh, I think it was three or f- I think it must have been three years in a row we didn't have a first round draft pick we took one last year yes uh, but this year we've turned pick two into two middling first round draft picks as well as well as a second second rounder from Port Adelaide in the Chesser to Sin deal last year so what you're looking at with the West Coast Eagles is a side that's one of the oldest in the competition and based on 2022 one of the worst sides in the competition as well the cupboard is very bare in terms of their under 22 talent and I I think as Eagles fans, we're all pretty happy with last year's draft. Hoff and Bazo showed some early signs, and then there's Chessa who didn't play a game, unfortunately. But after their worst season ever, they're obviously looking to transition the list, and this draft is really, really important for them. In terms of what they need, honestly, a little bit of everything. West Coast do tend to pick best available at the draft. However, I imagine that midfielders will be on the agenda. They rate it as a very even talent pool, according to Rowan O'Brien, the list manager at West Coast. As such, they traded pick two down to eight and 12, thinking they can get similarly talented players, albeit two of them. What does their ideal draft look like? For me, I think it would have to be a best available midfielder at pick eight is it certainly my preference the guys they've been linked to were Jinby, Hewitt, Philippou, Clark, McKenzie pretty much every midfielder around that range we've been loosely linked to I wouldn't rule out the prospect of Jed Buzzlinger getting drafted with one of those picks. However, I'd probably prefer two midfielders. Such is the Eagles' need for genuine midfielders on their list under the age of 22. They desperately need a fourth ruck on the list as well, running with just Nick Natanui, Callum Jamison, and Bailey Williams as well. So a, a fourth prospect would be great, whether that be Harry Barnett with their third pick or you know Jackson Broadbent could be a late or rookie pick as well. Outside the need for all of that ruck or a pure midfielder, I'd just say generally skills and speed is got to be on the agenda for West Coast. And they're a proud club. They don't want to go through a lengthy rebuild. This draft is really important from their perspective. The third club I'm going to nominate is the Hawthorne Footy Club. And to contrast them with the Giants and the West Coast Eagles, things aren't as dire on field or off field for them uh, as those clubs I've mentioned. But the reason I nominate Hawthorne is there's been a clear list strategy. They're trying to get younger. This offseason, they traded out their Brownlow medalist in Tom Mitchell to the Pies. Jager O'Meara joined Fremantle. Jack Gunston joined the Brisbane Lions. So a clear shedding of experience on their list and looking to invest in the youth. And, and my logic here is if you're going to do what I would describe as a somewhat of a risky strategy. It makes it more and more important that you nail the picks that you do have in this year's draft in which they hold picks 6, 24, 41, 48, and 50. And I'm not sure exactly how many of those they intend to take, but either way, nailing the picks they have in this year's draft is going to be important when you've just shed that much experience. They're clearly bracing for another year or two of not playing finals, and as such, there is a greater need for them to nail the draft picks that they have. What are they looking for at the draft? I'm not that close to the situation, but I imagine midfielders will be on the agenda, and with their first pick, uh, it's currently pick six, likely to become pick seven. There's a host of good midfielders around in that range, such as potentially a larger Sardis, Cam McKenzie, Jai Clark, or Mateus Philippou. From an outsider's perspective, I think they're looking pretty good for talls. They've got Mitch Lewis and Kaczynski up forward. And then down back, they drafted uh, Grant and Jabaras a couple of years ago. So they've already invested a high pick into a key defender. They're unlikely to do it again. And in terms of rucks, they've just traded for Lloyd Meek as well from Fremantle. So unlikely to be adding one through the draft, I'd imagine. In my subjective opinion, their best case scenario is probably Cam McKenzie, I'd reckon. I'm also a big fan of Philippou if he's available for them as well. And then past that, they're looking for, you know, probably the best available talent at each pick. If they nail their midfielder early, after that, I'd imagine best available. And the fourth and final club I'll nominate as needing to nail this draft is 
probably seemingly obvious in North Melbourne. Obviously, the context is they had a putrid season. The fact that the Eagles didn't win the spoon this year is a massive indictment on North Melbourne, and it appears their rebuild isn't really at an end anytime soon. They finished 18th, they had 2 wins and 20 losses, and they hold picks 2, 3, 23 now, and 40 and 43, and I've, I've heard they're not intending to take 43, so at least 4 top 40 picks that they'll want to get right. Their off-season strategy, other than trying to get good compensation for Horn Francis, um, with Clarkson at the helm, they look to get some more experienced best 22 players. They've only walked away with Griffin Logue and Darcy Tucker, but in theory, that will improve in the short term. I would argue it's not as important this particular draft compared to, say, a GWS or West Coast. However, when you factor in the fact that their number one pick from last year, Horn Francis, has walked out of the club, that is a massive setback in terms of their rebuild. And this year, it becomes important that the same thing doesn't happen. They are now their picks with two and three. In terms of this year's picks, it sounds like it's somewhat locked in. They're going to go with George Wardlaw and Harry Sheasel, which in my opinion, they seem like really safe prospects and really high potential ones as well. So they're in a good spot having picks two and three in this year's draft. I think beyond that, they're in a really good position to just go best available. They've obviously been drafting early for a number of years now, but it's more important about making sure that they nail the picks and making sure no one walks out on them again. So there you have it, guys. Four teams that really need to nail this upcoming draft. GWS and West Coast are probably on their own level uh, as, as teams that really, really need to get the best talent available that they can. And then below that, I'd say Hawthorne, there's somewhat of an importance or a pressure on them to get their picks right considering their strategy. And then for North Melbourne, they need to nail their picks in order for this rebuild to just not continue indefinitely. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought of my opinions. I left out Essendon because I feel like their on-field performance hasn't been woeful. They had a really bad year. They played finals two years ago. Uh, they haven't been ignoring the draft. They took three top 10 picks in 2020. I don't think their situation is quite comparable to the teams that I've mentioned in this particular video, but let me know if you disagree with that. Anyway, guys, look forward to hearing your thoughts on this topic. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.